Well, good evening, everybody. It's good to be here. Good to be alive and out here reading a little bit. And I've read this passage many, 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 many times. And to me, it's one of the most comforting passages of the Bible. Um, I never get tired of talking about the coming of the Lord. I, I, I don't honestly see how anybody can be a preacher of the gospel and be guilty of never using this verse or these verses here. It blows me away to find out and hear how there is so little information being shared from the coming of the Lord far as the rapture of the church. To me, it's the greatest event in human history. We think of putting men on the moon as a great thing. We think of dropping the two nuclear bombs on Japan was a monumental thing, and it was to them, and it was to the U.S. But think of anything else that a date in history, take 9-11, as bad as it was. Um, you can just go on. You can think of all kinds of uh, happenings in the world, but none of it compares to the happening that Jesus is allowing Paul to warn the church about. And I've read up on it, and I've looked at it, and I've had even places where people almost will refuse to even give it any credibility at all. And I just honestly do not see how that they can even call themselves a preacher of the gospel when they do not share the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, we can talk about the tribulation time. We can talk about the thousand years of the millennial reign. We can talk about Jesus coming back after the tribulation. And we can talk about Jerusalem and being set up and, and the temple being built. And we can talk about Everything, all the rules and the regulations that the Bible talks about, but truly talking about the greatest event in human history. And honestly, I'll be honest with you, if a person is not born again, the ones that are left behind is going to make little of it. They're not going to think about the return of the Lord at that moment in time because they're going to try their level best to sort of play it off. You know, I just take myself for instance. If the coming of the Lord should happen any time, and people try to start using my cell phone and using my number to call me, and I'm not here to answer, and over a period of time, none of my bills get paid. My vehicles are not leaving the driveway. The electricity is still turned on. The air condition is still set at 77 degrees. 
um, the groceries are still in the pantry. I mean, everything is like I have went off and I haven't let nobody know where I am. And the truth of the matter is, I'm, I'm gone. I'm disappeared. And maybe there will be people that will try to call. I pray not. I pray that when the Lord comes, that there's nobody that is left here that knows me, that is trying to give me a call on the cell phone when there's nobody here to answer it. I mean, you know, honestly, I want my life to be so involved with the coming of the Lord that nothing, nothing else matters to me. Because I know that the innocent child's going to be taken care of. I know that the Lord is going to take care of his children. I'm talking about the ones that have been born again and born from above. God's going to take care of his people. He's going to take care of his church. And I just find it just heartbreaking to know that people will walk into the houses of prayer on the following Sunday and some is literally praying and hoping that there will be a word about this topic but sad to say this topic is not going to come up you know, if I refuse to talk about something and say I have an issue that I have a sickness or say I have a cancer on my hand and I just decide to put a Band-Aid over that cancer, gradually that Band-Aid is not going to be able to cover up that cancer because that cancer is going to get bigger than the Band-Aid. And I think too much and too many times the church is too busy putting a Band-Aid over the cancer. And then all of a sudden, the cancer gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And what do you say when you look at your hand and see that it's grown bigger? All because we didn't face the music when it was small. I just honestly believe that there's going to be people that's honestly going to stand before God, and these are men of God that has been given a charge to preach the full gospel of Christ, but if they're not talking about the greatest event of human history, then they are they are stealing from people. If I had, there's a scripture, and I don't even know where it is, to them that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to them it is sin. To them that knoweth to do good. Is it talking about good things? Not, it may be. But to me, that's not what that means. To them that know to do good, to them that know to tell the truth, to them that knows that the truth needs to be shared to every body, every person. And when the man in the pulpit thinks more of his own little world more than the greatest event in human history that it that involves every human being that that knows the lord and that person is gone that person is raptured that person is not here anymore 
again, there's going to be people that's going to play it off. I just don't see how I could walk into my little place of fellowship and bring them a message that does not have truth involved in the seriousness of the truth involved to every person that is under the sound of my voice. That my responsibility is to make them aware of this devastating day for the person that is lost. Because let me tell you, it will not be a devastating day for the Christian. The true born again saved child of God, it will not be devastating for them. Because the Bible says absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And I believe what Paul said in the, in the verses in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 6 through 8, I believe in what the Bible said that we would rather be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. And I think anybody in their right mind that is alive today would want to be able to be looking forward to that time. To me, it's almost sort of like working a job for 30 years doing the same labor for 30 years, say you enjoyed your job for 30 years, and then th the time comes that you retire from that job. You know, I see these little video clips where these police officers are signing off for the very last time and you can watch them how that they literally bust into tears signing off on their two-way radio and some of the deputies are talking to that person that is retiring and that deputy is in tears signing off never to transmit over a two-way radio ever again far as being in law enforcement because they are officially retired. I would hope that we would be that excited to be able to come out and share about the goodness of God and the plans that he has in store for the Christian but for the ones that do not know the Lord, the ones that are not born again and saved, are they going to wonder where everybody went? Is their life just going to go on like there's? it's no big deal? There's a lot of people that deserve to know. I remember a song that we used to sing years ago as a little child, everybody ought to know. Everybody ought to know who Jesus is. And I believe that's true. Everybody should know about the return of the Lord Jesus. All this politics stuff is going to get figured out. It's all, it's all going to, I believe that, that that the pot of the stew is simmering right now. I believe it's fixing to blow a little bubble up. You know, when the water don't boil, but yet it's hot enough that it's releasing a little bit of air, and you see that little bubble on the stew beginning to sort of bubble lightly, you know there's a heat down underneath that gradually is going to start to be where it's really cooking and cooking hot. 
And I believe that's where we are today. I believe that that is exactly where we are today. But the Lord says he's coming in a time that we think not. So should my mind be on what I like to see in the election, or is my mind more on trying to understand how a man could get behind a pulpit and never warn their people that Jesus is soon to return. That just literally blows me away. These scriptures that I have in front of me is in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 13. And Paul starts out saying this, But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren. Number one, people should not use the excuse to be ignorant of something that Paul says, I don't want you to be ignorant of this. I want you to know, brethren, concerning them which are asleep. They had wonder about where people went back in that day. And there's people that wonder where people go even in this day. That ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. And there's a lot of people that do not have hope. Not the hope of the rapture because they're lost and without Christ. And then it says here in verse 14, if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, and there's a lot of people that don't know that Jesus died and rose again. Many people in the church hear that, but do they really believe that? That Jesus died and rose again, even so them, meaning the ones that are dead, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. That means that they have to be in their spiritual bodies up in heaven. They're with the Lord. Whatever kind of body they have, when they leave this world, they leave the old fleshly carnal body aside, but then they go to be with the Lord with the new body meaning the spiritual man, the whatever's in heaven with the Lord at that time. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, Paul was not talking in his own permission. He's saying this by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep meaning that the ones that are alive is not going to go before the ones that are dead. The ones that are dead is going to go first because it says in the next verse, for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. That means the ones that are dead in the Lord is going to rise to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we, the ones that are saved, will be with him in the air. Jesus is hovering over the earth. And we're down here. Then we which are alive and remain shall be called up. The greatest event in human history is to be called up together with them, the ones that were dead, that are no longer dead, in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. But the best part of it all, wherefore, or because of all that I said before, wherefore comfort one another with these words. But yet, if we never preach it, then where is the comfort going to come from if it's never brought up? If it's never brought up, where is the comfort going to come from? 
I'll tell you, the comfort's not going to come. Because if the message is not being spoken, then the comforter and the comfort is not going to come because people's going to say, I didn't know. And a lot of people is going to be justified in hearing the fact that they didn't know because nobody told them. The church will not speak it the way Paul wrote it down here in First First Thessalonians chapter 4. And it's sad. To me, it's the greatest disjustice of all is to not tell somebody to be prepared for what the Lord's going to do when he returns. And yet, we just go along and believe that, oh, you're just emotional again. Maybe so. But I really do believe there's going to be some people that is going to be totally shocked and surprised. I do. I'm looking forward to this day right here. This day here gives me hope because I have no other hope and nothing else. I don't have no hope in this world, this life. I'm appointed death one day. I've seen several of my neighbor friends that live literally within footage of my house die with the virus. It's time to tell people to be comforted that Jesus is returning. I hope you know him today. If you don't, you need to get a hold of me and let me know. I'll be more than glad to help you walk you through the scripture that you can be able to know. Elderly Ministry is the website. There's a phone number there that you can call. Thank y'all for watching.